Don't pull back on worship, because uh, we're going to talk about that some tonight anyway. So uh, we may as well put into practice what the Lord already put on my heart. And it's so cool how God just orchestrates uh, events to come about and uh, kind of sets it up. But Acts chapter 16, in the verse 16, we'll cut, to, cut down in the mid, midway of the chapter. It says, it came to pass as we were going to prayer, which is a good thing, amen? said, a certain damsel possessed with a demon or a spirit of divination uh, brought her masters much gain. They were using her to go out to fortune tell. You know, man, don't, uh, man, you don't, uh, believers, we don't, you don't play with horoscopes. Uh, you don't play with tarot cards. You don't open up the door with a Ouija boards and that kind of thing. Uh, that, that, the enemy tries to disguise that kind of stuff. I mean, I know some people might want to turn it down or turn me off, and I don't, and I'm just trying to help you out. Uh, I, I've seen too much damage come from, uh, from doors that get opened up, and you have no idea what you're, uh, what you're, what you're bringing and giving an invitation to. Uh, uh, the enemy is looking uh, for those he can devour. Uh, I, I've seen stuff from tarot cards, Pokemon cards, you know, Harry Potter. Uh, I, I mean, there are just avenues the enemy seeks to exploit. And uh, if you don't understand that demonic realm, it uh, might be why things go haywire from time to time. And uh, you can sneer about it if you want to, but I have seen families destroyed. I have seen children with their lives. They just can't sleep. They're in torment, you know, because of things like that. So uh, you just ask the Lord. You can't live with my revelation. You let God show it to you. And, uh, but just, you know, when you seek the Lord, just have an, a listening ear. That's all I ask. That is all I ask. You know, because if, if, if he doesn't put you in check about it, you know, that's, that's you. He said, work out your own salvation, salvation right? So we'll just kind of let it rest right there. But the Bible tells us this woman had a spirit of divination. She was fortune-telling, doing things of that nature, and obviously it wasn't a God thing. Uh, okay. And uh, so uh, this, this woman was following Paul and uh, Silas around and, uh, uh, of course, announcing. And what she said was, was accurate, which is really why we have to be thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost because how are you going to discern between Mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to have to have that unction on the inside, that knowing. And he said, my sheep know my voice. So, uh, you know, that may require you and I spend a little time with him so we know. So we know him. And you don't know somebody on first date or even the second date or even the third date. Knowing takes intent. It's got to be Intentional. You know, my wife and I have been, been together now, 40, married 43 years, and we dated four before that. So 47 years, of, you know, working on this. And uh, she still surprised me from time to time, right? And I'm going to let that sit to the side because I want to I see 44. And, uh, but anyway, she was, walk, and she was saying accurate. These men are servants of the Most High. But, you know, I, what I found is God don't need the devil's advertisement. And uh, it said, this she did many days. And man, there's a, there's a lot in here. Lord, he, man, we, he, we, we won't finish tonight, I don't think. And uh, it said many days. And then it got to a point, Paul, it says 18, being grieved in his spirit. He turned around and he found it. And I'm kind of like, man, why didn't he do that on day one? But Jesus, who is our ultimate example, he said, I, I don't do anything until I have the release of the Father to do it. He didn't do anything. He didn't say anything. He didn't move until the Father gave instruction. And so evidently, Paul has not had an instruction to deal with this until a certain time. You know, it's somehow, just because you see it don't mean you immediately, uh, I'm trying to help us out right here. Sometimes, just because you see it don't mean you need to deal with it at that point until the Father said, you might not know everything there is to know. There might be something behind the scenes. There might be more to it than what you see on the surface. Just, we all right? You don't need to be diving into something before the Lord releases you. But when he releases, then you need to go. And then it evidently got to a point where Father said, okay, now. Now's the time. Now's the time. And he said, they, you know, of course, he rebuked the spirit. Spirit came out, ended up upset the rulers or the uh, guys who were making money off of her. And so they caused a ruckus in the city and actually had Paul and Silas drawn before the magistrates and had them beaten. And it said they were, because uh, they were saying they were just perverting their customs of the times and, and so forth. So they beat them. Of course, we know the story. They tear the clothes off and, uh, you know, put many stripes on them, put them in prison. Verse 23 tells us. 
And uh, so that when they get them in prison, they tell the jailer, keep them safe, which that's kind of a contradiction because y'all don't whoop the fool out of them, and now you want to keep them. <laughs> I, I guess to keep them under lockdown. And it said, having received such an instruction, put them down into the innermost part of the prison. So if, if the prison had a dungeon, that's where they were. The prison had an inner prison. It's like, these boys must have been a serious threat, you know? And so they're down in the innermost part. And uh, not only are they in the innermost part, it said they're, they're, they're in shackles, they're in, their feet are in stocks, which you've seen some of the old medieval movies or something, you understand what's going on. I mean, they're, they're not in, I mean, they've already been beat. They're already bleeding. They're already hurting. And even more than that, the uncomfortable position of being bent over, so that just stretches your back, makes it even worse, right? I'm trying to paint a picture here that we understand they're not in the Hilton. Right? They're not on a memory foam or a purple mattress. I know some. Come on. These boys are hurting. They are hurting. I mean, and they're not hurting for a wrong reason. They were doing right. Don't be surprised when the world comes at you and you're doing nothing wrong. Matter of fact, the Bible says you ought to count yourself in good company. Sometimes your haters are your best cheerleaders, or can be. Maybe we just, you know, uh, the Bible even says count it joy. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, school's not the only place we need to learn to count. Sometimes, because if we don't know how to count Bible, we might be misunderstanding what's really going on. The opposite, it, see, if the, if the devil's in your face, it means y'all ain't walking in the same direction. So just, I just want to challenge somebody tonight because you're kind of like, well, why is all this going on? He's showing us how to count the right way. You know, you, it might not be adding up down here, but heaven's taking note. Heaven's taking note. And uh, so they're in this place, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's rough. It's rough. And uh, anyway, taking a long time to build this up. But at midnight... Paul and Silas prayed, and I don't want us to just rush through this. I think we need to see what's going on. They prayed, and I believe through their prayer, they got instruction. And we'll, we'll clarify as we get a little more layers on this uh, to understand, because I don't want to just blanket say this works or that works. Uh, the, ultimately, it's the obedience to the instruction that is what works. They prayed, and through that prayer, I believe they got an instruction to sing to begin to sing praise to the Lord. And it says unto uh, him and the prisoners heard. So this was not something silent. And I, I can only imagine, you know, if Paul's praying and Silas and he gets this instruction and maybe Silas, he just, I don't know if he heard the same thing Paul heard, just trusted or not. But, you know, I'm trying to put myself in that position where, you know, you just kind of see the two in the conversation going on. And Paul looks over Silas and says, uh, hey, I just got something from the Lord. Oh, I was really? Is he going to send an angel down here to break us out? No, we got to sing. You got to be joking, man. Singing is like last on what I, my to-do list right now. I mean, I am hurting. I am bleeding. I am ticked. Y'all ain't helping. Y'all ain't helping. But I'm trying to get us to a place where we understand sometimes it's not what we want to do. It's what we need to do. And there was no accident that the praise was in the, 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 the level it was tonight because the Holy Spirit's already showing. Somebody's prison is already starting to shake because of what we already put into place, what our, what's already started. So don't be surprised when doors get unhinged. Don't be surprised when stuff starts breaking loose. You know, the Lord's already set it in motion, and this is just a confirmation on What's already, what's already rocking? It says, suddenly there was an earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately, every door. See, it's not just about... See, there's a, there's a time when the Lord may have you not as loud. Because loud don't mean holy. Loud don't mean powerful. If, if we're being loud so that we can be heard for the sake of man... It probably indicates that we don't have a clear understanding of power and authority. But sometimes there is a, a, a point where the Lord will have you. He instructed them, sing so that others can hear. 
Yeah, I think the instruction to you and I is live your life loud so that others can see. Because we're in a time where there's a lot of questioning going on. And the world needs to see light in Goshen. The world needs to see covenant light on, in the lives of sons and daughters to a point where they see a difference. See, they couldn't see them, but they could hear them. They couldn't see their faith, but they could hear their faith in their God as they begin to say, oh, wow, these guys are nuts. They are singing. You know, and I mean, in other prisoners' minds, it's like, these are some bad boys in here. They're probably going to die tomorrow. And that could have been the case, too. We don't really know. We don't, we, don't, we don't have the full of what may or may not have happened. All we do know is what we have. And it says, they begin to sing, and the other ones heard immediately. Every door was open, and everybody shackles. You talk about getting shackles off my feet. Might be where it was uh, the inspiration came from. And even the keeper of the prison woke up. And when he ran in, he sees all the prison doors open. Of course, he knows it's his life if anybody got out. So he's about to take his own life, thinking the worst. And I mean, and look at the love of God. And I, I, I'd have just kind of sat back and watched the show. I'm just, you know, maybe not, but I'm just... I mean, because this is probably the same guy that just put the whooping on them a few hours earlier. But I, I, I don't know about y'all, but this is, it, is, this is a serious challenge to me. Because sometimes you don't want to love the one who cut you off in traffic, much less the one who beat you. I don't know why I have to be under the bus. I just need to wear coveralls when I come in here. So, because that's just, seems like I have the under the bus ministry sometimes, having to tell on myself. But anyway, it, Paul, Paul is concerned about this boy's salvation. I don't know about y'all, but that challenges me. Challenges me on a whole nother level. It's like, Lord, y'all keep praying for me, and the Lord's going to keep working on me. But Paul cried with a loud voice, don't, you know, do yourself no harm. We're all here. And then, of course, we know ultimately, you know, the guy, he, he sees such a display of the goodness of God. I and mean, this is what it's all about. Treasure is not measured in a bank account. True treasures measured in, in salvations and souls and kingdom stuff. You know, and Paul had a recognition of that. And the guy said, what, what do I need to do to be saved? And, of course, he found out, and then his whole house got saved. But the door and what I, I just want to talk about on turning it around and praise and worship was a key to that. Of course, I, I believe, again, the obedience. Second Chronicles, that's a heck of an introduction. But anyway, Second Chronicles. Uh, not on me, on the Lord, you'd see what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not taking credit for that. That's God. Second Chronicles chapter 20, another one we look at from time to time, kind of in alignment with this. Uh, but it says, it came to pass after this that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, with their uh, others with them, the Ammonites, came up against Jehoshaphat to battle. And it said, there came one and told King Jehoshaphat, saying, there's a, uh, there's a great multitude coming against you from beyond the sea on the side of Syria. And it said, and they are, uh, you know, it's, it's a bunch of them. And Jehoshaphat, you know, he, he hears about this massive army coming against him. And it said he, it, it, it initially put a little fear in him, but it, it, instead of giving in to the fear, it provoked him to stay in faith, and he sought the Lord. Uh, you know, I sought the Lord. And he heard. And he answered. We sing it, but he was having to live it. But get some faith for your story tonight by what we read. And let's get some application on it because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's not a respecter of persons. But he is looking for a faithful cry and not a fearful cry. Come on, you need to understand that. It wasn't a fearful cry that got God's attention. It was a faithful cry. God's not moved by emotion. He's not moved by need. He's, uh, uh, you know, being loud, not going to get him, well, it, it, it's faith. Without faith, it's impossible. So we, we really, really, really need to get the full revelation on that. So he, he sets himself to seek the Lord, proclaims a fast. Everybody is in on this. So if you, you know, if you don't understand personal fasting, or if you think that was Old Testament, uh, I don't know why we think Old Testament, New Testament, expiration dates and whatever. It, it's word of God, word of God, it's all good, it's all God. You know, and some principles back there s certainly apply to today. You know, I've, I've heard and people kind of get in the ditch when they say, well, we're just New Covenant, New Testament, that's under the, the law was good. Well, never, nothing wrong with the law, we just couldn't keep the law. 
is covenant. We just access a different way. We got the blood of Jesus, thank God. But anyway, that's, that's more than I want to get into right now. But uh, drop to verse 14. Chapter, uh, same chapter, obviously. <laughs> verse 14, it says, uh, after they had proclaimed this fast and they were seeking the Lord, and uh, the word comes through, uh, not the king, but one of his entourage is Jehaziel. And I don't know where they come up with these names for these folks back then, but Man, I'm telling you, if you're playing Scrabble, I don't know why we can't use names. They, we were playing a game the other day. They said, you can't use names. They said, man, I, well, not that I can spell them anyway, but I, it's just, but nobody else knows how to spell them anyway. So you, I mean, son of Zechariah, the son of Benani, the son of Jael, the son of Mattani, a Levi, golly, son of Asaph, spirit of the Lord, finally, came on this fellow. And he said, I've got a word from the Lord. King, you know, of course, King James, he hearkened. Hearken, you can't use that in Scrabble, inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he says also to the king, just because you are king don't mean you are responsible for it. If you don't understand in the body of Christ that every joint has a supply, you may be missing out on an instruction. Amen. Now there's a head, we're not taking away from the head, but the head's responsible once he gets the instruction, whether he's obedient to it or not. The thing is, is if you get an instruction, take it to the head. Everything decent and in order. You know, and once you made the delivery, it's up to the head to make the decision of whether to use it or not, and that's going to fall on them, not on you. We each got to just be responsible for the part I play in this. But man, when we when we're flowing like we ought to, the church is an unstoppable force. He said, "Listen, King." He said, "This is what I feel the Lord is saying to us. Thus saith the Lord: Don't be afraid or dismayed. Don't get discombobulated by all this." Great multitude. The battle is not yours, it's God's. You think he could breathe a sigh of relief? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is the instruction. Tomorrow, go down, uh, but uh, this is the way you got to do it. You come up by the cliff, and you're going to find them over by the brook, and he's laying out exactly what's going to unfold and how it's going to unfold. But he says in verse 17, which means victory, you do not need to fight in this battle. Now, this is, sometimes it's difficult for us to be obedient because we might not understand. How am I going to win a battle and I don't have to fight a fight? I got to do something. No, we, the only thing we got to do is be obedient. Now, there may be a time where you do have to fight, but it's not about us fighting. It's about us obeying. He said, set yourself and stand still, and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. If they would have lifted a sword, they'd have lost the battle. Sometimes we think we got to defend ourselves, but if the Lord gives you an instruction that I got you, sit back, be silent, don't do nothing, don't say nothing, the worst thing I can try to do is intervene. The worst thing I can try to do, do is def- try to defend myself because if I take it, the Lord lets it go. And that's a lesson I have had to learn the hard way. So if, just take it from me. When God gives you an, in- an instruction, just do that. Even if you don't understand it, trust the Lord. That's why we have to have an intimate knowledge with the Father so that even if I don't understand what he's saying, I understand his nature, I, I, I have a... Uh, his character, I have a sense of him enough to know I need to trust him. It has to go beyond my mental assent. Some things you got to get by faith, by the Spirit. He said, stand still and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. He said, fear not, don't be dismayed, tomorrow go out. He said, and this is going to happen. So Jehoshaphat bows his head with his face to the ground, Judah and all the inhabitants, and they begin to what? Worship. Worship. Now, I, you know, and I've taught this, you know, many times that, you know, he sent out the praisers, you know, and that won the battle. That, that did not win the battle. His obedience won the battle. I, I just wrote myself a couple of notes here, I think, by the unction of the Holy Ghost. Obedience won the battle. The instruction was to stand. Faith responded with praise. The res- what we see when we see the praises going out is that is a faith response to the goodness of God. 
You know, so nothing wrong with praise and worship. Matter of fact, there was everything right with praise and worship. But praise and worship wasn't to win the battle. Praise and worship was for the Father alone because he's got it. And I just, it says when they begin to sing, of course, they were in the place they needed to be. Verse 22 says the Lord sends out ambushments against the enemy. It says so much so that they begin to turn on one another, destroy one another. Matter of fact, it said they destroyed. There was not one single man left standing on the battlefield of the enemy. Not one. Not one. And they never lifted a sword. They lifted a song. Woo. Man, that's faith. That's faith. That's faith, but as, as he's speaking to us tonight because he's, he's given us some instruction and he's given us some promises, and I, I would dare say we're getting a message like this because we're tempted to pick up the sword. Some of us are getting tempted to want to do something to try to make it happen. Try to go beyond what he said, and I'm trying to help us stay in our place. Stand still. There's several times the Lord says, stand still. He told Moses when they were at the, you know, between the sea and the, uh, and the, and the, stand still and you'll see the salvation. Of, and, and matter of fact, almost the same term, he said, the enemy you see today, you will see no more forever. And man, that's a, sometimes it's a challenge to stand and to be still and know that he, all by himself, is God, you know, because we, 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 and, and, and there, like I said, there'll be times when we get an instruction and there'll be something for us to do. He'll have a part for us to play in it, you know, but then uh, the catch is, is then we think sometimes the enemy starts trying to get us to think, well, I have to be a part every time. No, we don't. We need to be obedient every time. Obedience is what wins the day. And he said, they all turned to one another. And it says in verse 24, when Judah came to the watchtower and they look out over the multitude, all they see is slain enemy. And, and this, is, this is important. I, I was not going to go here, but I, I really feel like it because we're coming in. I, I believe this is a prophetic. It said, because it, it's, a, it's a takeaway for us in here. Jehoshaphat and his people come and they, 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 the enemy is decimated. And they're going to take away now the spoil of what they find on their adversaries. And there's an abundance, verse 25. Say abundance. Uh, we need to know, I mean, we've been in a, we just finished up a series on God needs you to be rich. I've been seven weeks in teaching this. And so it's, it's no, not a coincidence. That's why the Lord prompted me to come back to this scripture right now because uh, through obedience, God's bringing provision for us for assignments. There, there are things going on that you'll hear about very soon. Mm. Mm. Uh, but I, there's, there's some people in here, and they, they know when I text them uh, camel emojis. Camels are coming. Camels are coming, which means caravans. It means, yeah, come on now. Camel, look at your neighbor and say, camels are coming. You might just go kind of look it up, but... But it's a good thing. Yeah, I know y'all looking at me. I find the, you know, single hump camels. I find the two humper. You know, I, I get them. You know, I just send a whole little caravan of camels because uh, God is able. And it's, and it's not up to us to figure it out. You just got to walk it out. But I'm telling you, camels are coming. And it said they, in abundance, riches and precious jewels. And, and it was so much stuff, it took them three days to carry off the spoils. Three days. I mean, wrap your minds around how, who brings their wallet to the battle? <laughs> the only thing I could figure is, is God had these boys heaping up stuff for his kids. God had the enemy in such commotion amongst themselves, heaping up stuff for God's kids. Is you a God's kid? You need to say, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. So, I, I, I'm, mm. yeah, let's just, Father, what, how, what a, Lord, what a, whatever way this applies to us, 
God, I, I know it applies. Lord, but it, it applies to us corporately. It applies to us individually. Uh, but I think that you can break it down in a way that every single one of us have a, a revelation of what this means, of how to go about it. Lord, how to... Uh, Lord, we, we're not going to find what we're not looking for. So I thank you that even in this, you, you show us if we've overlooked something. Lord, if, if we've uh, walked by, or maybe we need to look again like the prophet said. Look again. Go look back. Because if you've got a word, God's faithful. It's not if or maybe. It's an absolute. All the promises in him are yea and amen. If you got a word, keep looking, keep pressing. Whatever it is he said to do, you, you keep on, you stay on that. You lock in on that and you don't let the devil talk you out of that. And you will see the salvation. You stand on that word. You stand on that word, you wage a, Paul told Timothy, wage a warfare with the prophetics. And one of the prophetic over this house is his land and property would be granted and given. He said that you'd be out of debt. He said he would annihilate debt from this house. Father, we warfare it. I, 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 I've shared this kind of praying, talking, you know, just declaring. But I don't believe God wants everybody in this house to be a millionaire. But I, with every fiber of my being, I believe God wants every child of God in this house out of debt. So, Father, however we need to get from where we are into that reality, show us. Show us. Show us. Show us. Lord, if there's a... a, a mm, Lord, uh, an aspect of praise and worship, something we've not fully uh, connected with, then Lord, reveal that tonight as we are looking at praise and worship. But there are some other things in this that we, we can see as well. But Lord, the ultimate key is being obedient to the instruction. Yeah. Lord, if we got to fill a water pot, let's do it. Yes, Lord. Lord, whatever it is, whatever it is, that you, you told them go borrow vessels and come back and shut the door. God, whatever that means, whatever that is, show us how to... Have a proper faith response, Lord, so that we can have the yes and the amen. Lord, and I don't know how, three days worth of gathering, but so be it. Be it unto us according to your word, Lord. Whatever, whatever spoils are out there that we need to be gathering, I thank you that you show it. You said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Lord, I, I know we are in a season, Lord God, where there's so many Sons and daughters that have been cheated, just like Jacob and Laban, time after time after time after time. But God, there came a time, just like when Paul and Silas, and I don't know why it took that point, but I know it came a time when you said deal with it. Lord, there'll come a time when you'll deal with the Labans in this world. And there will be a transfer of all of it back into the hands of those it belongs in. Restitution and restoration. Lord, so we just apply faith to your word tonight, Lord God. And we sit for an instant. And, and, and uh, you said, Habakkuk, I will stand on my watch and I will wait to see what he will say to me. Lord, and when that word comes, we steward that word. And I thank you, Father God. We have an expecting ear in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for that. I, man, I just love that y'all are, you know, it, it's... it's uh, it's fun to cook when people are hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Psalms 34. Woo, yeah. Psalms 34. This is where that song came out of, so we're going to just put our eyes on it. But, it, it, man, it's such a powerful application for all of us tonight. Eight eleven. 11 I'm trying to keep an eye on time. I know it's school night. It's school night, right? That was more, the parents would say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, 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 I'm just going to let that go right there. So. Bless them, Jesus. Yeah. Kids can stay up. I got to get in bed. That's some Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear, therefore, and be glad. Oh, magnify. Man, all this jewel prayed it out. We sang it. I mean, it was, uh, it was so many aspects of this. The Lord just, I mean, this is woven like a tapestry for us tonight. You know, so, so divinely orchestrated of God. Get what he's saying. Magnify. Let us exalt his name together. When you magnify the Lord, it does not make the Lord bigger. It just allows you and I to see him more accurately. Magnifying glass does not change the image we're looking at. It changes our ability to see 
That's why you, you get into circumstances sometimes. You've got to magnify the Lord because there, there's times that problem can stream, scream pretty loud. You know, that adversary can, stuff that has a voice. I don't know why for so long we maybe not have had that revelation, you know, I mean, and, 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 but uh, things can talk without saying a word in the spirit arena. You know, the, Jesus spoke to a fig tree. He spoke to wind and he spoke to waves. You know, and, uh, and we, we sometimes don't uh, uh, have a full revelation of that. And, and just to show you how it's been kind of twisted is, uh, I won't ask for a show of hands, but if you've ever tried to crank a lawnmower that don't crank, you probably have spoken to that lawnmower. <laughs> and maybe a not a blessing kind of way. And we, I mean, come on, BC now, I just, I'm, we don't do that anymore. That's the old man. But I'm just saying, ain't, we ain't thought twice about cussing that thing out. But yet, you, you, if, if you was to go, uh, you know, and somebody see you, and I, I, I lay hands on my truck, I, you're a good truck. You are, yeah, you're a blessed truck. I, I, I like my truck. You know, and I, but it's, it's like, you know, the world will make you feel like an idiot for talking blessings over something, but don't think twice about cursing. We need to get a revelation of the power of our words. That's why the devil want to just agitate you a little bit more. He wants you to talk about stuff. We just need to be talking right stuff. You know, so we got to watch the power of our words. Magnify just lets me see more correctly. You know, because your bills can talk to you. I know y'all heard them voices, right? Don't answer them out loud. People will look at you strange. You know, but I, no, we're talking about getting beyond that because I don't really, we, we shouldn't really care what people say. But I mean, you know, we just need to learn to expose the enemy. Recognize what he's up to, you know, and then start saying the opposite of what the enemy wants us to agree with. Say the opposite. His Bill's talking to you about whatever. You, should, you magnify the Lord. Bill, you ain't, you ain't no match for my God. Uh, my, my check is not my source. My El Shaddai, my Jehovah Jireh, my Abba Father is my source and my supply. He said, if I'm tapped into him, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers. I, we spread out our roots. We don't pull back in times of drought. It talks about even in times of severe heat. We don't need, it don't affect us because we're tapped in. We're tapped in. We're rooted, amen? So uh, you, you got to learn to fire back. I mean, David... David did not hold back when Goliath was cussing him and running him down. David fired right back. You come at me with sword and spear, I'm finna chop your head off, son. I mean, and David, I, man, it's such a, that's such an awesome story. But David started, he, he just, he, he done gone beyond Goliath. He's looking at everybody. All y'all in hiding in the hills, I'm coming for you. Read the story. You talk about faith, speaking, calling things that be not as though they already are. Don't, don't ever be, in, you know, Paul, shot, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. There are times when God wants his sons and daughters to be vocal. You know, just make sure we're doing it a way that it glorifies him. We're doing it in a way that they don't see or hear us. They, they have a revelation. He's nuts. But he's right. You know, and sometimes they won't recognize that until after it starts raining, Noah, but go ahead and build your boat. If, we, if you're waiting on people to understand and recognize and give you recognition, you're going to drown. You just get a hammer, you get nails, you do whatever, and get to it. Get to it, you know, because sometimes their understanding won't come until the other side, the other side of our obedience. They don't understand why you're singing or how you can sing in prison. How, how can you do this? You'll understand when the gates open. You'll understand when you're out, when you're experiencing freedom too. You know. But until then, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Then we'll let us exalt his name together. I saw, verse 4 of the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. Ah, delivered. Come on now. Don't make me sing that by myself. That's embarrassing. They looked and they were enlightened and their faces were, oh, verse five, come on. Their faces were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. 
You know, I, I mean, don't, don't be embarrassed to lift a prayer over your food in the restaurant. Now, I mean, don't scream it unless the Lord tells you to. He probably won't. Because again, God, that brings attention to self. That, that's what, I, I think that's what, I mean, that's what you, how you knew it was a wrong spirit behind the woman. God don't need that screaming. The results speak the name of the Lord. And your life will speak his name. Your faith in action speaks his name more loudly than our voice ever will. I cried and the Lord heard and saved me. The angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him, which means have an honor and a reverence. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. And he's empowered to prosper. Reverence the Lord, his, ye his saints, for there is no want. That means no lack. You know, same thing David said. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want or lack. He said the young lions go without. Why? Because they're arrogant. They think they can do it without God. I've been one, been there, done that. Dumbest mistake ever. Think you can do it without the Lord. You know, that's what, that's what it alludes to is that immaturity. You know, which, uh, you know, and just because just you may be 50 or 60 don't mean you mature. Amen. I, I've seen young ones. I just, yeah, y'all, y'all know what I'm saying. I, y'all more Wednesday people. Y'all know. Young lions do without. They suffer hunger. But those that seek the Lord. So important. Why? Seeking the Lord because I, we don't live our life by assumption. We live our life by instruction. We seek the Lord, we hear what he has to say, then we apply that, we do that. Obedience to that is what causes the blessing to flow unhindered. Said, then we not want or lack any good thing. For time's sake, go to Mark chapter 5. So we're talking about turning it around, turning these situations around. We'll dive back in this. Uh, maybe next, well, no, won't be here next Wednesday. So you can come, but I, I'm, I'm not going to be here. Uh, I, that's, oh, that came out anyway. It's, uh, I love you, though, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, and it'll all be good, you know. Mark said, I saw it's, just, it's fun. I mean, I just, man, have fun with your family, right? I'm, we might need to praise before y'all have meeting your family next week. I don't know. That's Mark chapter 5. <laughs> There's a little too much laughter on that one. So that's, yeah, we got some work to do. Mark chapter 5, verse uh, 35. You know, Jesus uh, was on the, well, let's see. Is that right, Mark 5, 35? Yeah, Jesus is on the way to J. Iris' house. And, uh, you know, midstream through the journey, the woman with the issue uh, came. And, uh, of course, she received uh, her healing. And then right when that's wrapping up, you know, he tells her, verse 34, go in peace, you know, and be whole, you know, of your plague, be free. While he's speaking, one comes from the synagogue and uh, tells Jairus, you know, your daughter's dead. Don't trouble the master any further. And uh, Jesus hears the word that was spoken. Uh, but how do I? But the news hadn't changed the mission. Jesus was on the way to Jairus' house to heal her. Nothing had changed unless he accepted that word. If you've got a word from God, don't get distracted. Just because you hear a report doesn't mean that that report has changed God's will. Jesus knew, though, that what would change it was Jairus' faith if it failed. God's word was still in play as long as Jairus' faith didn't fail. So as soon as he hears this, he said, do not be afraid. Don't let fear in. Fear will pollute your faith, contaminate your faith. You, so I said, we don't tolerate fear. And we're, we're about to get some clarity on this. 
Because verse 37, he suffered nobody else from this point to go with him. We're talking about how to turn some situations around. And uh, as much as praise and these other things can be effective, uh, it, it's, it's very important for you and I to make sure we how to. You better know how to subdue an atmosphere or change an atmosphere or, or be in control. What, God doesn't need you and I being, uh, what, what is it, uh, a thermometer just reflecting what's in the room. We need to be able to walk into a room, discern the room, and bring kingdom into the room. You may walk into a room of fear, but you reset it to faith. By our words, by... We good, y'all. I'm telling you because this is a lot of times it's lot where it's often we miss it. Yeah. It's often time we miss it. So like, I don't. What's going on? And he said, only Peter, James, and John, because everybody with you ain't with you. Yeah. And sometimes, it, I mean, sometimes that only means it's not bad. But if 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 God hasn't connected them to this assignment, then don't you do it. Sometimes we want to help God out. The more, the merrier. Gideon had to, had to, had to take him down before he could go in. He's, uh, that's, that's, what you mean I got too many to fight? I thought, them, you know, better the odds. No, no, if you got people in fear, they're going to be like a cancer to your people in faith. And if they're not... That's why there's, man, and, and so, and, and even if we don't understand, Lord, I thought, don't, don't think, do. what God say? Jesus said, I don't do nothing unless the Father says this is how it's done. So what, it, there's, there's things, that I, we told staff coming up, I said, you know, going into 25, there's going to be some changes, and we don't even know what this may look like. I don't get to do what I want to do all the time. We're following. We're following. So sometimes we say no, and why? Because that's what God said. I heard one brother say, if I'm going to answer for a mistake, it's going to be mine. I'm not going to answer for yours. And I know that sounds kind of harsh, but it's like, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Because God ain't said do it. I don't need a reason to not do something. I need an instruction before I do something. Every one of us, every one of us, every one of us, you, you don't need a reason to not do it. We need an instruction to do it. He goes into the house. And when he goes in there, he sees all this stuff going on. Why y'all doing all this? She's, she's, he didn't even look at death as dead. She's asleep. They laughed him to scorn. He put them out. I said all that to say, sometimes for you turn around, you got to clean house. You may have to clean house. You know, you may have to just, uh, it, it may be, and it could be a literal. It could, it could be some things in your house that the Lord, movies, Ah, you know, I just, uh, whatever. He, he may say, you need to get that out your house. You need to get that out your house. That represents the other side. Could it be that simple? Would you, do you want to risk your future on it? Do you want to risk your promises on it? Do you want to, if I'm on air, it's going to be on this. Mm. I'm telling you. It, it could be, because whatever he said, that's what we do. You know, and, and don't pattern your do after anybody else's. Because it's, it's, again, work out your own. Your own. You know, well, how come they can do it? That's, I've had to learn that's a very immature response to a father that I need to trust. If he said do it, I'd just do it to the, we, to the best of our ability. And he put them out. And this is the Lord showing you and I how to live a life of absolute obedience to the Father. If we want to see the turnarounds, we want to see the breakthroughs, we want to see the blessings, we want to see all the promises, yes and amen. Man, this is just some of the, some of the things that, that, that we need to look at and then ask the Lord, how does this fit? 
That's all the time we got. Let's stand. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. My toes are hurting. I am young. No, I'm kidding. It's, it's all, man. I'm, and I love y'all. Golly. Love my people. I got the best job in the whole planet. And I know I speak for Pastor Stephen, Pastor Philip. I, man, we just, man, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Man, we are just, Abba, you are so good. You are so good. Lord, and just thank you for allowing us to be here tonight, Lord, to be with those of light, precious faith. Lord, if there's any sickness in here, we annihilate it right now in Jesus' name. We annihilate it. Lord, we come against a spirit of fear, of doubt, unbelief. We drive it out by the power of your presence. Lord, I thank you right now. Top of our head to the soles of our feet, I declare the covenant of the living God. Speak blood on our behalf. Lord, you brought them out even under, uh, uh, when Moses, it says when they came out, they said that there was not one sick or feeble amongst them, even through 40 years in the desert. Lord, their foot didn't swell, their sandal didn't wear out. Lord, we've got a better covenant on better promises. How much more should we be operating, seeing the fullness of God, the majesty, the greatness, the, the miracles, signs, and wonders? Father, none of it comes through disobedience. Obedience is the key. Better to obey than sacrifice. So I thank you, Lord God, that you bring a clarity to every one of us on how this fits, what it looks like, how to apply, apply this word so that we can, Lord, just be walking it out in a way that glorifies you, brings you glory and praise and honor. Lord, you, you said if I be lifted up, it'd be a draw and take place. Lord, from the, from the, the youngest level to the highest in here, Lord, we want to lift you up whether it's at school or pumping gas or in the grocery store. Lord, we just want our lives to just be a, a, a living billboard of your goodness. Lord, that people can just experience you in any way you see fit and help us just to, Lord, be in unity with whatever you're asking of us. Lord, to be willing and obedient. Lord, I thank you that the greatest days of our life are ahead of us, not behind us. Not behind us. Lord, I thank you for turning things around, even as we've talked about that tonight. Lord, somebody's been it. Lord, there are multiple situations. But Lord, the prophet said tomorrow about this time. And I believe with all my heart, Father God, that you are giving us this word because you are flipping it in Jesus' name. Lord, you are turning it around. God, so, so great will be the come out. <laughs> Woo. That there won't be any sign of what was because of what is. There won't even be a sign of what was because of what now is. You said, behold, I make it all new. So we thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.